Look, Bernie Madoff was the scandal of the century. He took money from investors who thought the money was kept in their accounts. But in fact, Madoff spent it right away on investors who took money out early and on himself. That's called a Ponzi scheme. His $50 billion one was called the biggest Ponzi scheme ever. But it wasn't the biggest. There's a much bigger one. The biggest Ponzi scheme ever is being run by Congress. It's called Social Security and Medicare. It's not just a billion dollar scam. It's a trillion dollar scam. What am I talking about? Well, all that money that the government took out of your paycheck, that money you thought that they were saving for your retirement, is gone, spent. There is nothing left. It's been used to buy wars and earmarks, pensions, welfare, all the stuff that Congress wants. Three years, politicians paid current retirees' Social Security checks by taking the FICA payments from those of you working now. But that won't work in the future. Once people my age start to retire, I'm a baby boomer and there are a lot of us, when we retire, someone is about to get stuck with a huge bill. Who? Today's young people are about to be forced to write checks to cover Social Security and Medicare payments to millions of baby boomers like me. You understand you have to take care of me, right? We boomers who expect to collect Social Security and Medicare are basically stealing from babies. You two may not have much of a future because you got to pay for geezers like me. You better work really hard. They'll have to pay such high taxes to pay for my entitlements. They might as well wear a ball and chain. It's a Ponzi scheme a zillion times worse than Bernie Madoff's. But Congress isn't investigating it, they're running it. The unfunded liability of Medicare alone is $36 trillion. That's how much Congress has promised to pay future retirees that we don't have. Add in Social Security and the unfunded liability is up to $42 trillion. Who's going to pay for it? Well, for years, working people have had that deduction taken from their checks for Social Security and Medicare, and there have been enough working people that the total taken was more than was needed for workers' retirements. The extra money has been used, actually, to help balance Congress's wasteful budget. A group that's upset about the coming entitlement deficit made a film about it. Their scrap sums it up well. In the last 40 years, we've had 35 budget deficits and only five budget surpluses. But remember, we've been running large annual surpluses in our Social Security program for years. These surpluses are spent every year to help pay other bills in the federal government. Without the Social Security surpluses, our real track record on deficits looks a whole lot worse. It sure does. But the really bad news is what's going to happen now. This year, for the first time, Social Security is in the red. Social Security will not be helping to reduce our overall deficit. It will be adding to it. Our enormous Medicare deficits and other federal spending that also lie ahead will only make this situation worse. Much worse. So what are we going to do about it? Will the politicians cut entitlements to keep entitlements from bankrupting us? No, they never cut anything. And in fact, when the politics gets tough, they campaign on the fact that they're not going to cut anything. I will protect Medicare. This was at President Obama's health care address to a joint session of Congress. Listen to the applause. Republicans didn't clap, but they aren't proposing cuts either. Well, one has, Congressman Paul Ryan. And at last month's health care summit, he challenged the president directly about the deficit. This bill does not control costs. This bill does not reduce deficits. Instead, this bill adds a new health care entitlement at a time when we have no idea how to pay for the entitlements we already have. And we're joined now by Congressman Ryan from Washington, D.C., as well as economist Veronique de Rougy. Let's first look at these charts, which lay out the problem pretty clearly. Veronique prepared these. I'm told people call you the chart queen. This is what government spends now. Yes. Medicare and Social Security already consume 
uh, half of half of our budget, roughly, and uh, and the, uh, the the bottom part of the charts is all that we've been spending in the last 50 years on things like defense, education, and transportation. So what that's what needs to be reappropriated, reauthorized every single year. And the top, the green parts, are what we call entitlement. So as I look at this, the entitlements are not that ugly so far. But let's change the chart to show what's going to happen in the future. That's what unsustainability looks like. As you can see on this chart, basically, not only are we going to be spending way more money than we've had in the last 50 years, but on top of that, a biggest share of the total is going to be spent towards the elderly and mainly for their health care with Medicare. Now, Congressman Ryan, I, I hear you're going to fix this because the president has just named you to a uh, commission to do that, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. I am a member of the commission. I've been putting fixes out for years, though, for this. Uh, I'm the only person in Congress who's actually said, here's a way to fix this plan. CBO, the actuaries, they all say the bill I put out makes Medicare, Social Security, and Medicaid permanently solvent and pays off our national debt. Problem is, there's not a huge attitude to do something like that around here. My point is, let's get up and fix this now before it becomes a crisis. And we know we're going into our debt crisis fairly quickly in America, not unlike the one that Europe is in the middle of. And so what I'm trying to do is sort of be a Paul Revere on this stuff and say, let's get this fixed right now at a time when Washington's talking about adding more entitlements on top of it. We should be fixing the problems we've got right now. Look, the statistic I use is when my three kids are my age, I have young children, the government will be double in size what it is for them at that time. I asked the Congressional Budget Office, well, what are the tax rates going to be on my kids? They said this, the lowest tax bracket, the 10% bracket in America today for low-income people goes to 25. Middle-income taxpayers will pay a 63% income tax rate, and the top rate, which is what the small businesses pay, will be 88%. That's the kind of taxes you're going to hit the American people and economy with. We're really on the cusp of trading our free market democracy, the American idea, for a cradle-to-grave social welfare state that will bankrupt us.